Philip, I can understand how emergence works, that each level from physics to chemistry to biology has its own series of laws. But if I step back, what follows from this? Is there anything of, of real significance? Mm -hmm. Well, for some of us, to be able to do good science is significant. The, the attempt to understand the world in its actual complexity as this develops over time is massively interesting. And anything that opens up the world to our study in a new and more varied way is itself interesting. But we as human beings have a lot riding on this one as well. I mean, think of the way in which we're torn between the two extremes. If reductionism or physicalism is true, then it turns out that my thoughts, my intentions, my moral striving are just a strange sort of manifestation of dynamics that finally are microphysical, matter and energy and motion. Many neuroscientists believe exactly that. Yeah, one told me, wires and chemicals, that's all we are, <laughs> wires and chemicals. But I can't look that in the face without having to look at my own life in a different way. It has huge existential import. On the other hand... That doesn't it, make it wrong. No, it doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> at all. But there it is makes a, it uncomfortable. It's an <laughs> existential cost okay. that at least we get to name if we're talking about significance, right? right. On the other hand, right. if what I really am is a soul eternally created by God for specific purposes revealed in one or another scripture, then my life is scripted in that direction as well. But what if we are the product of an open process of emergence in an evolutionary dynamic, which is unpredictable, unscripted? What if there are emergent capacities of these complicated biophysical systems that we are, that nobody can say in advance, and that lies in our task to understand what this thing is, what are these capacities that we now have, and to do something with them? That's a fascinating and significant result. And so therefore, you're, you're saying that the nature of our consciousness, a very uh, controversial area today, is an emergent uh, uh, factor of the world that emerges out of our complex biology, out of our complex brains? Yeah. Let me say it a little bit technically, because it's not a simple subject. We find in every biological system emergent properties that are more than the sum of the parts okay. and that have to be studied at that level and not reduced to a lower level. But is consciousness in terms of the human person different than some of the other uh, of dependents of one layer or on another layer? See, ultimately or metaphysically or ontologically, no. That's the, the, the shocking answer to the dualist. There isn't suddenly a soul. Rather, emergent properties like sentience in a cell, like motility, the ability to move, in, in primitive organisms, bacteria, um, properties like sociability, emergent uh, cultural features. We see culture already in birds. We see cultural practices in apes. Um, for example, by looking at a video of a group of apes, apart from any environmental clues, you can tell which group it is because of emergent cultural features of that particular group. So likewise, when we come to thought, it's not as, as if here we encounter God for the first time, as it were. Rather, we have an amazing emergent property of this complex system. Think about the brain. 10 to the 11th neurons. 10 to the 14th neural connections. That's a big number. It's the most complicated natural system we've yet discovered in the universe. Is it surprising that it would manifest very, very surprising properties, like reflecting on world peace? <laughs> You know, or wanting peppermint ice cream. <laughs> you brought up God. Can emergence lead to some understanding of God or opening us to some transcendent uh, understanding? Is, can this concept give us another vehicle for looking at, uh, a, at a theology? I'm cautious about those connections. There are people who try to move from the emergence of human personhood and thought to a, some sort of proof for the existence of God. And I would be really skeptical of that. But emergence does suggest that we might be the kind of animal that is upwardly open. That is, that it's something about our thought that turns itself from our particular environment and asks these broader questions. What's the nature of the universe? What's the meaning of our existence? What should we live for? Those questions, if, if strong emergence is right, are not mistakes, anti-scientific moves, 
They're rather natural things for a complex organism like us but to does ask. That, but does anything follow from that about the reality of the substance to what you're asking about? Can you even hint? No proof. Yeah. I, I grant it. No proof. We're, we're out of that game. But do you have a hint that maybe there's something, or is this just uh, a purely manifestations complexity of the physical world? Yeah. Let's consider some possibilities. It might mean nothing. Sure. These could just be byproducts of this particular big brain that we have. It could mean that the uh, um, emergence of a kind of moral awareness, self-awareness or consciousness has happened. Maybe there would be some connections with, say, Hindu or, or Buddhist thought in particular. Here's a fascinating one. What if the emergence that we see as conscious beings is not the final stage, but that all consciousness together is part of a new emergence of a higher reality. A famous philosopher in the beginning of the 20th century, Samuel Alexander, suggested that the world might be gradually deizing itself, a kind of emergent God or emergent divinity arising out of these complex systems. That's very different than the traditional theology, to be sure. I would make a lot of theologians uncomfortable, right? But a theologian might still have a persuasive response. And this was where I'd locate myself. It could be that if a God exists, that this God uses the process of evolution to bring about beings capable of these sorts of broader reflections, capable then of knowing God. Is what you're saying then that emergence does not prove God in any way whatsoever, but it would be consistent yeah. with that a, a structure of reality to be true, that indeed there is a God, what emerges would be consistent with that, in fact, maybe even likely under that hypothesis. Yeah, very nicely put. The only trouble is that it's not going to make some traditional theologians comfortable. This is a God who's immersed in the process of I sense of time. you don't particularly care about that. <laughs> I'm willing to say where I think the arguments lead. It would be a God that immerses God's self into the flow of time, a God willing to deal with contingency, it wasn't known in advance that we would have uh, 10 fingers and 10 toes. It wasn't known in advance the kind of environment we'd create for ourselves. So what you're saying is something even, even more substantive. You're saying that not only can emergence be consistent with there being a God, but emergence, in your view, seems to be consistent with a certain kind of God. It does, actually. I think that's true. I think it's much more consistent with a God who's open to change, development and contingency. The model might be not the classical symphony with every note pre-orchestrated, but a jazz session, a jam session, where musicians sit down, maybe there are a few motifs that are launched, call those the physical laws that structure the universe. And what comes out of it, nobody knows until you get there. Not even God. Not even God. The future is unknown. And God maybe in some way can lure the process, I don't know about that, but then it's up to these human agents with this huge amount of openness or freedom that we have to respond, to develop the way we will. Will we blow ourselves up with nuclear weapons? Will we miss our own nest in the coming 50 or 100 years? Or will we continue to evolve morally as well as scientifically to create a, a situation where there's more justice and less suffering? Those are theological themes. And if I would like to think of a God who pulls us in that direction, is, is there a difference between a, uh, a theology of emergence, which I think you're describing, and, and sort of a, a, a radical emergent theism or a radical emergent theology? Are those different concepts? Yeah, that's a, actually a very good distinction because some people would say that emergence doesn't allow you to speak of any pre-existing God or mind, that what you have is only the evolutionary process, which so far has led to us and few in the future may right. lead to yet another level. Right. Right? That would be a radically emergentist theism, the God who is becoming only. Right. But I think it's possible to think of a God who in some way, or a mind that has been eternal, but at the same time, a God who gradually is developing in relationship with the world, who, where the future is unknown, what we will become and what that God will become is unknown.